Hi, Dan Whitaker here. I'm about to analyse the golf swing of Matt Kuchar, the recent winner of the Heritage. Now, um, Matt's actually made a few interesting changes in the last year or so with regards to his technique. It's actually not quite as uh, flat, so to speak, as it used to be. You know, I, I used to always think it was a little bit too underplaying for my liking during the first move. And um, I often thought that he... Um, tends to have a little bit too much loop shift on the way down while the arms tended to work back over plane. Now, what we'll see is, um, at the moment, this golf swing, he's tending to keep the club a lot more in front of him than he ever used to do. Um, interestingly, with every club in the bag, he always hovers it at a dress, whether it be an iron or a driver. Now, I think that for a lot of the players, uh, actually hovering the driver can be a good thing, because uh, when you're teeing the ball up, uh, there is a tendency to sometimes want to catch the ball a little bit towards the heel as you start to raise the club up towards impact. Now we'll see here how um, the toe of the club works up and it's a hair shut down at this point and he's definitely taking it back more with the arms than he is with the body and a lot of the work is being done with the right arm as the right arm tends to bend and the right wrist uh, tends to hinge fairly early. Okay, so you keep, but he does a great job of keeping the club head outside the hands. Now what we see that he actually used to do, and we've got two different videos of this, both are a touch lower down on the camera, but it doesn't hide the fact that his club head used to stay so much lower to the ground and work very much underneath his hands. So it used to get behind him here. So because of this, the club would always be working behind him, and consequently at the top of the backswing, we'd always see a left arm that was a lot lower down relative to the shoulder plane and his right elbow would always be tucked a little bit more behind the right side of his body. We take a look at the golf swing now and we're starting to see that the right elbow is starting to hinge down more and is actually more in front of him with the left arm a tiny bit higher but he definitely hasn't stooped as much uh, in the back swing or appeared to have lost as much height as he does on the older swing on the right. Here's another one on the right, this was from the Masters, and we'll see here again that this one tended to work very much underneath, the right elbow even got even more behind him than on the previous video, and the left arm worked very much across him. Now the one at the Masters, I believe part of this was because um, Augusta calls for more of a draw, and he's actually trying to create more draw, perhaps by bringing it more inside, because I think um, a lot of Chris O'Connell's um, favoured patterns are to see someone hit a kind of pull fade as the standard shot. So what we'll see now is the club loops over in the transition as he loops back over in front of him and he then kind of chased a little with his right hand to create more draw but because it was attacking more inside the path of the club head was more of down the line on the way through so the exit point was more down the line more than more left. What we see now is the club swings down, back down, in front. There's so much more room in this transition. There's a heck of a lot of space right in here with his arms relative to his body. I think, personally, that this delivery position is you know, far better than this one here. I just think that he's got so much more space. The right elbow is nowhere near as stuck and tucked behind the right hip. It's on the front part of the right hip. So there's space where that right arm isn't going to need to chase out anywhere near as much through the impact zone. So we'll take a look at this as it goes along a little further here with Matt. So that right elbow stays in place. And there's nowhere near as much chase with that right arm through impact. So the club can work around more. We'll see here how it chases out a little more. And actually works up through the middle of his shoulder more. And we can see how much more rotation has been of the club face. Because we can see how toed down the face is on the right hand screen. As opposed to on the left hand side it's actually in a more neutral position relative to the same frame rates. We're also seeing that he's clearing more aggressively into his left heel on the left hand side, but a lot of this is due to the room that he's created in the backswing. We see again on the other image we've got of Matt here on the right hand side of the screen where the club worked very much under plane. He didn't keep the club head outside the hands as much, but an interesting fact is the club head stayed a lot lower to the ground and didn't, the toe of the club didn't get up in the air anywhere near as quick as it does right now. 
So we see a massive difference in the location of the hands and the toe. But we're actually seeing that rather than him sucking the handle around him, he's actually letting the club hinge up a tiny bit early. He's still doing it with the right arm, because we can see how super connected the upper left arm is here, and he isn't as one piece in the first move as I would like to see, when I like to see the arms, the body and the club all working away as a singular unit. So what we then see is, obviously it sets up, and he gets it very much in front of him all the way to the top here. But I think he does a great job of keeping that club in front of him all the way down, and then through impact. I think that this is a fabulous move without him ever having to compromise the delivery of the club head. I think that when it gets too much under plane here, we then start to see how the arms shift over. So we can see how aggressively the arms move over in this direction. See they move over and then down. And then there's a bit more chase and we can see how much more flip there has been from this right hand. A lot more chase of the club head very aggressively past the hands right here. The toe of the club re uh, releasing a lot. And we can see that the, the difference through this impact zone is quite dramatic from the left hand side. So the right hand side has been nowhere near as much chase with the right arm. But this has all been due to the cr space. So the more room he creates in the backswing by keeping the club in front of him here is actually having a direct result in how much space he's got coming into the ball here as opposed to in the past where it didn't have anywhere near as much space the right elbow was stuck more behind his side so it had more chase whereas this new one has very little chase in comparison now if we have a look at Matt with So we see here with the driver, um, we notice that, that the hovering that I mentioned before is seen here with the driver. Uh, we see that, once again, the club is very much a lot more in front of him than it used to be. So we can see it's setting up. I'm a much bigger fan of this move than I was of when the club used to get behind him, because I always used to think I had to get stuck and I'd have to have too much loop shift for my liking. One of the things I don't think that ma maximises is his height. And the distance he could generate, because you know he's, he's fairly low down on a lot of the stats. You know his club head speed is only 108, which is 175th in the rankings, and his distance overall is down. Uh, his to dri driving distance total is 280, but his radar stats are saying that he his carry distance is 257.7. So you know he's not maximising uh, the leverage he could, could create through his natural height being at six foot four. But one of the things that I see is that you know he is a little bit inefficient in the backswing in that he lets his arms keep on going a little bit past the shoulder turn. It's not done anywhere near as bad here. But as he starts down, he makes a great move here of being able to deliver the club head in front of him. But we see that he has to stall out through impact. So we see that that body stalls to let those arms fire through. Now, that effect there is definitely slowing him down. Now, if we have a look at it from the front view right here, one of the things that is quite noticeable is that once after he's made the backswing here, is how much his head has to go backwards. Okay. Now, I believe that a lot of this is because the ball's a little far back for him with the driver. Um, and I don't think he's created enough axis tilt in this direction away from the target and address to allow him to correctly you know come through the golf ball on the desired angles so what he also does is once we get to the top of the backswing here there is very little you know shift of the pelvis towards the target it tends to spin so to hit it on the correct um axis tilt away from the target and strike up on the ball a little more with the driver he has to back the head out on it, out of it Doing this means that he just compromises a bit of speed because he has to stall the turn to let the arms fire through impact and then he comes up through the shot. But because he delivers the club in front of him, he's a very, very accurate driver of the golf ball. You know, we notice that he is right up there in the accuracy stakes, um, which is pretty impressive as his driving accuracy percentage has him ranked at 28th. Um, we have a look at it from down the line here. One thing I'm really um, impressed with for him is the way that he delivers the club here. He's got lots of space with the arms in front of the body to allow the, the arms and the body to actually come through together. But the stalling out I see as being a bit of an issue. I think part of that is due to the fact that 
have a little bit of setup, and I also think that he could just shift a touch more towards the target. Then we could then get rid of this stall, and I'd like to see the arms and the body more sink through impact instead of seeing this little bit of stall and chase away, which is actually losing him some yardage. Overall, though, I think that he's this is a big improvement on the looped golf swing that he was making for a while. I think it's a big improvement on the overall loop golf swing he was making for a while back here, where we saw that that golf club went massively under and then over. But he's definitely giving up a quite a lot of yardage based off his natural height. I mean, it's quite a flat ball flight. But I think that if we could, if he could um, alter things, you know, maybe taking advantage of his height, getting some more leverage in this downswing, and then not having to back up to wait for it quite so much, and then get rid of the stall out through impact, so therefore he's hitting it with everything coming through together as a singular unit, we'd see him just get a lot more yardage. It's a better move than he was making, and overall this is a lot more like the golf swing I like to see, particularly with the way it's going to be swung in front of you, it's just a little bit shallower than I would like to see him swing it. I hope you've enjoyed this analysis. If you'd like to see more from me, please visit my website at danwhitakergolf.com and watch out for more weekly winners being analysed here on YouTube.